Welcome to our show. I'm Diana Day, and today we're going to talk about how to eat an elephant. Launch your product to United States market.、Uh, here with us is Peter Henry.、Uh, thank you, Peter, for coming. Thank you, Diana. This is this is a great opportunity. Thank you. And Peter is a managing partner of Act Five Ventures. So, what is Act Five? So, Act Five actually has has become something different than it started. It started out as a business providing access to capital for early stage startups through syndication. In other words, we would seek out great companies, great deals, great opportunities, and then go seek the funding for them. But also, along the way, help button them up and、mm. help get them ready for capital, ready to make good use of the investment capital we brought in. What we've kind of Shifted into over the over the two and a half year history of the business, is we're now in the process of raising a new venture fund, so that as we find these companies, we actually provide the lead capital directly to them, in addition to helping to bring additional capital in. But it gives us the ability to be a part of their evolution from the earliest stages through the transitions into becoming. A fully scalable, fully viable, and sustainable business.、Mm. So, so now we're we're really a venture fund connected to a pool of resources that provide mentorship and guidance throughout the entire life cycle of of a startup's.、Mm. So you are helping startups not only from zero to one, but also from one to two, right? And one to two, two to, <laughs> to three, and three to four. And, and that's that's a that's a, that's an important differentiator because、mm. the if as a company starts with. A great idea,、mm -hmm. you know. Call that the ideation phase. Moves into developing an MVP or a first offering for their service or product, to market testing it, and then eventually going out and getting scalable capital and growth, and growing from there.、Mm -hmm. Everything changes in each of those phases: the people, the level of capital, the investors, and most importantly, the startup ecosystem. You know where. A large fraction of, of startups fail from the foundation. The failure actually occurs mostly in the transitions between those stages、mm -hmm. because they don't have the guidance. Right? <laughs> two great on, entrepreneur inventors、mm -hmm. are not necessarily two great marketing people or business people or operations people.、Mm -hmm. So our goal is to help guide them through and provide both the capital and the operational、mm -hmm. support. You can tell the how passionate Peter is when you're talking about all this. <laughs> <It's> because, a... <laughs> yes, because you've been doing the the mentors for the early stage companies and the founders over last 20 years,、mm -hmm. and then you also being an investor for over 17 years. Yep. You have launched、uh, 14 startups in the different fields. So just give us some background of yourself. So so I started out、mm -hmm. originally.、Uh, you know, first of all, I was a, a tech guy from a very very young age. Liter mm -hmm. Literally from when I was ten or eleven, I built、mm -hmm. my first computer and designed it. Wow, ten or eleven. <laughs> so back in, back in the nineteen seventies. Okay. Well, I, I I had a lot of good opportunity and and had a, just had a lot of fun tinkering. But I、mm -hmm. grew up as a techie.、Mm -hmm. uh, wound up.、Uh, Growing up on the east coast of the United States,、uh, and then came out here to go to university here in Palo Alto at the small place up the street、uh, at Stanford. Palo Alto is a, is a huge place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, now it's all the investors、place. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.、Um, yeah. So you know, came out here to go to Stanford. Was in the computer science department, both learning and teaching. But、uh, I wound up as a researcher first at Hewlett Packard, and then at Apple Computer、uh, in the '80s. And somewhere along the way, I got involved in these very, very large-scale innovation products. At Apple, I was the second member of the speech recognition research group, for example.、Wow. Mm -hmm. At HP earlier, I was part of the the networking team that was building, you know, back then, the the first high-speed networks that we now take completely for granted.、Mm -hmm. um, along the way, I eventually wound up getting shifted over to the business side because it. The thing that needed to happen with a lot of these innovations was to connect innovation, technical innovation, to real users' needs,、mm -hmm. and in the business sense as well as in, in the utilitarian sense.、Mm -hmm. So I wound up ultimately becoming part of a large systems integration firm、mm -hmm. as their chief architect. We we spun off、mm -hmm. uh, as as an independent business.、Mm -hmm. I was part of the management team that bought the company out from its parent. And so I wound up shifting little by little into becoming more of a business and finance person.、Mm -hmm. And in the the first dot com 
boom, I actually spun out of there, launched a company, and we raised venture capital. And to give you an idea of how different it is now in the, in the early stage capital markets, we had a business plan and an idea and nothing else, and we raised $6 million in about 30 days. Wow. <laughs> it just, you know, and, and people look at us now and go, how did that happen? And we went on to, you know, through the boom and through the bust, raising a lot more capital. And upon exiting those, you know, the, the two companies that that became, I became an angel investor mm -hmm. and really focused on trying to give back to that community by bringing not just money, but sort of the intellectual capital of that experience, launching startups, having most of them blow up, mm -hmm. but enough of them succeed to, to mm -hmm. turn me into an investor. Warp ahead a few years <laughs> to the present, and what I found is that the, the early stage ecosystem itself mm -hmm. has issues. There's lots of capital, and there's lot, there are lots of entrepreneurs and, and, and people with good ideas, mm -hmm but there's not a lot of guidance mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. so, so I've been developing this model that, that we mm -hmm. call the Safari Guides model mm -hmm. that's like participative guidance, not mm -hmm. just here's your money, mm -hmm. go do something good, and if it succeeds, we'll all make money, mm -hmm. because that's still a world where 90% of things mm -hmm. fail. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the best ideas mm -hmm. fail in those transitions from becoming an idea to becoming a business. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do this. Wow, thank you. We're so fortunate to have you, uh, you know, with the knowledge and the experience and also wisdom. And the scars. And loving <laughs> hearts, yeah, yeah, scars, yes. To share this topic, so how to eat an elephant. We call the American market, US market as an elephant. Mm -hmm. Why is an elephant? So it's an elephant, and, and funny, transitioning from safaris to, to, <laughs> to elephants. Um, the US market is, is interesting because it's obviously huge. I mean, it's the largest single market uh, it, it, at the moment economically out there. But the reality is it's not a single market. It's, uh, it, it's actually, and depending on what kind of product or service you're mm -hmm. offering, mm -hmm. it can be two or three different markets demographically and in terms of the, of the economics of, of the situation, or, and socially. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've, I've drawn a map for, for economic students at one point where if you took a map of the United States and drew a six point asterisk, mm -hmm. you know, swipe, 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 mm -hmm. and divide the country right about the center into six pie slices, it actually is like six social and demographic and economic um, different countries. Mm. But different. I think that even though the different places, different districts, but they, everybody's shopping on Amazon, right? Some mm -hmm. people will think that when I put my product on Amazon, mm -hmm. that it actually reaches the to, to whole United States. What do you think? Well, you have visibility mm -hmm. to the entire market, mm -hmm. but you still have to have the ability to, to recognize with, you know, for a given product, for a given uh, supply chain of delivery mm -hmm. and how that product is deployed to real customers mm -hmm. and supported and maintained over the long haul, mm -hmm. that there are still differences in the markets. Um, you can think about it in terms of differences in the, the age bracket, for example. Millennials consume differently mm -hmm. than Gen X people mm -hmm. or baby boomers. Mm -hmm. Okay, Each of those three groups right now today has about the same amount of relative economic power as each other, although obviously the millennials are rising mm -hmm. and the baby boomers mm -hmm. are, are mm -hmm. getting older and, and declining, but they have different consumption habits. Mm -hmm. And the fact that a product is available mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're serving the, that market the same way. Mm -hmm. You may market to them differently. Amazon is essentially a point of sale. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, it's a point of awareness, but that's yes. different for different people, right? Yes. The millennials will go to, to Amazon first. Mm -hmm. The baby boomers might hear about a product from a friend or a neighbor or even see it in a store mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. or see it in a product placement and then get interested in it. And how they actually purchase is one thing, but how they develop awareness can differ a lot. Yes, now I understand why you, <laughs> why you see, see so. They can purchase it on Amazon, right. but how do you the market them? That's a different story. Right, exactly. So what's, your, what's the, the common mistakes that people will make? Well, I think the common mistake, the biggest common mistake that I see, especially with new products mm -hmm. 
coming in and being introduced from offshore is not recognizing that 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 difference between sort of availability and awareness, right? Why they not recognize the difference? Well, you know, it's it's. I have a couple of different opinions on that.、Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot of products launched from offshore markets get awareness through a, a sort of, you know, either sort of a viral process or,、mm -hmm. and they get a certain amount of traction that way. But that traction doesn't necessarily translate into traction for. Sales, yeah, for and, sales and income, and, and、yeah. income in the in in another market,、mm -hmm. especially since you're dealing with sort of a a, a two-ended、mm -hmm. process here.、Mm -hmm. There's getting your product into market,、mm -hmm. literally from an awareness perspective.、Mm -hmm. There's the physical pipeline.、Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're selling a physical product,、mm -hmm. you know, then you have to deal with how your product is going to get delivered. So, so how to transfer the awareness to the sales? Well. A couple of different ways. There, one way is to is to identify what engagement model you want to start with,、mm -hmm. and this goes back to sort of our theme of how to eat an elephant. Is、yes. you don't necessarily want to, you really don't want to just attack all channels,、mm -hmm. all distribution、exactly. approaches, all at once,、yes. because they, they may not have en enough money to do so. Right, a lot of them will fail.、Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of them、yes. will just outright fail. That's right. And、mm -hmm. and until you've really sort of learned by doing about.、Mm -hmm. The relative economics of each—it's hard to pick which the best ones are.、Mm -hmm. And especially if you're a, if you're a relatively young and small company,、mm -hmm. bringing a product to market, you want you want the biggest, most obvious, most impressive wins on a percentage basis,、mm -hmm. as much as you want traction, right? I mean, you know, selling 10 million widgets at a loss is not as impressive as selling 10,000 at a huge profit and showing the ability. To scale from there with with exactly. with capital, exactly. So、yes. so that's that's an important distinction.、Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's important to sort of partition this idea of market approach to to actual selling and distribution.、Mm -hmm. We won't even talk about support on the back end, but it's an it's an important aspect because you know different products、mm -hmm. have have different levels. If you're you know if you're a personal robot. <laughs> The support model, even the even the selling model,、uh, the literal selling model, might be different than if you're a you know, you know, going from you know a five thousand dollar physical product to a fifty dollar one over here.、Mm. Um, maybe there's a whole different approach, and the selling channels、mm. often wind up being something that you can't do without partnering. Without some kind of distribution partnership、mm -hmm. or whatever, distribution partnership I think is also very very important. But how、mm -hmm. to build that? Because when you just came to this country as、mm -hmm. a offshore product, it's、mm -hmm. very difficult. What、mm -hmm. are the you know elements they they need to prepare? Well, I, I would say first and foremost, you look for look for expertise. I mean, one of the big risks of coming to market here is if you just say, "Hey, I have." I have this product that I want to sell. I have this great technology. A <laughs> hundred、yes. people will come to you and say, "Oh, I can sell that for you. I can distribute it for you. Just pay me a retainer,、mm -hmm. or just,、uh, or just, you know, give me a, a, a deposit on this, and I'll make it work." But there's no proof in that. Yes. Right. Ideally,、mm -hmm. you want to have a synergy between、mm -hmm. someone who's willing to. Engage in that process.、Mm -hmm. Who believes in the product enough that they are also willing to have skin in the game and take、mm -hmm. a risk?、Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of companies. I have portfolio companies where their their approach to entering the market was to find a distribution partner who they had to pay to distribute. Pay get, to distribute. Yeah. Yes. At, at which point,、okay. if it works, great. But if, But it, if doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> who's lost? Now, and if you have a product that's compelling enough,、mm -hmm. you should have no problem finding a partner who's willing to share the risk、mm -hmm. of of that、mm -hmm. of the launch process. Finding a partner who's willing to share the risk, but how to find a partner who's willing to share the risk? Well, that involves. That's actually, in one sense, easier than you might think, because for any given product, whether it's whether it's a physical product or a virtual product.、Mm -hmm. You know, there, the one thing we have here is sort of an unlimited number of 
interest groups and conferences and whatnot, and you kind of take a first step into the, into the waters in this market, first by going and finding out you know, what, the, what the people are like, who's populating that swimming pool, mm -hmm. and look for the people who are going to work well with you and your company's culture and your product and your offering. So you really go on a people search first, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not even about just throwing your product on Amazon and hoping for the best. It's because if the distribution requires mm -hmm. a more managed approach, the thing about partners is that in some cases, they're just there to help create awareness, but in other cases, they already own relationships that you've won access to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of find out who's who and who has what yes, relationships. Yes, exactly. So for each product, you know, and, and, and of course, mm -hmm. you know, it's not one kind, of, one kind of person, just like it's not one kind of product mm -hmm. or distribution channel. Mm -hmm. So really, you go on a, a human search yes. first yes. and yes. find your partners and make sure that they mm -hmm. are working with you on, a, on as, as similar a basis mm -hmm. as possible to the way you work mm -hmm. so that you're not being taken advantage of, mm -hmm. but they're also being given an opportunity. Exactly. Build the mutual trust and mutual benefits. Exactly. Yes. exactly. I think that's really very important. But some of the companies, they, when they launch their product, they probably want to set a office here in the United States. So which place is the best for the, for the company to set an office? Um, Little bit depends on what kind of, of, of product offering you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's software. You, you, you mentioned about robotics just mm -hmm. now. So for example, like robot. So for example, a robot product, and I'm gonna speculate a little bit here. There mm -hmm. are robot products that are more f for entertainment, if you will, mm -hmm. and robot products that are more functional you know, for a particular purpose. But if we're talking about entertainment, I mean, robotics in general, there are you know, Boston, the Bay Area, um, and, and to some extent, even some places in the Midwest, like, like, uh, like Michigan, believe it or not, mm. have centers of excellence around robotics development. But remember, that's development, not necessarily marketing, and not necessarily product pipeline management. Mm -hmm. So if you were trying to establish a support operation, for example, those would be the marketplaces. Mm -hmm. But for that kind of product, if you're talking about distribution, now you want to now you want to talk about who you know who's going to distribute this. Is this a is this a two hundred and fifty dollar product that I could buy at Target mm -hmm. in the toy section, mm -hmm. or a five hundred dollar product, or is this a product that has to be literally sold through a whole collaborative process? You know, if it's if it's a ten thousand dollar robot you're not even thinking about sort of conventional retail channels for distribution. That requires an actual sales force to go out and sell it. And mm -hmm. you have to develop that sales force. And their location for where you would establish an outpost mm -hmm. um, really would be more rooted in where, your, uh, where you think your, your primary customer base will be because there will already be mm -hmm. a center of excellence around distribution mm -hmm. and sales management mm -hmm. serving that population. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in general, obviously we're talking about one of, you know, one of the, the core population centers, whether, you know, New York, LA, Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, um, even, uh, you know, even sort of the, the next level ones down from mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But that's where the people are who are gonna be buying mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I just came back from China last, last month and I mm -hmm. saw so many innovations there, mm -hmm. a really cool product. But when they, you know, they be already become very popular mm -hmm. in China, mm -hmm. but when they come to the market in the United States, uh, probably at the very beginning they were thinking about, uh, people were thinking, oh, first of all, we put on Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's some other things need, needed, like what do you say, bring the awareness. Right. Yeah. Right. Awareness is like branding, PR, and marketing like that, right? Right. But even though they put on Amazon, Amazon is like a huge sea. The, yeah. All the things just you know buried there. How to make them stand out? Right. Right. I mean, this is this is this is where the disconnect happens mm -hmm. between availability and real market awareness, mm -hmm. right? I mean, especially if if I have something that's not very innovative it's actually okay to put it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. The reason why is that 
you know, if I'm just making another kind of digital camera, or if I'm just making another kind of, of uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, a new kind, you know, a cute new stuffed animal, whatever, any kind of physical product, if it's already got a category and there's already a marketplace for it, I can insert that into that marketplace and people searching on Amazon will just find it and awareness can happen. But if it's, a really, if it's truly innovative, then people aren't thinking to look for something that they don't even know is there. Exactly. So <laughs> that's yes, the problem. Yes. That's a problem. So mm -hmm. you, you need to educate the audience, right? Right. You, you, you that's, need to, that's very difficult. Right. You need to create. I mean, think, think about the model of how, how Steve Jobs innovated the smartphone, for example. Well, Apple. there's only one Steve Jobs, one Apple. <laughs> but think about the... The other companies don't have that resource. They don't have that resource, but mm -hmm. think about the approach that ha was taken that made it work. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and bear in mind, when Apple introduced mm -hmm. the iPhone, or, or, or actually, I'll go back even further to a, po a point, a place where Apple even didn't actually have the kind of marketing clout that it has. Mm -hmm. Think about the iPod. Mm -hmm. Did Apple invent... The MP3 player? No. No, no <laughs> did, they're not even the first one. Not even close. Yes. Did Apple, in, you know, did Apple invent the, uh, you know, the touchscreen uh, player? No, none of that was their invention. They perfected it aesthetically from a user perspective, but most importantly, took a market approach of creating awareness by driving desire mm. and literally getting out there and saying, You've never seen this before, but it's exactly what you've always been waiting for. Mm. I mean, think about they, that. <laughs> yeah, they tell you what you need. Yeah. <laughs> yes, instead yeah. of, you know, the asking you for what you need, they tell you this yeah. is what you need. Yeah, you've always wanted mm -hmm. this, even though you didn't even know it existed. Mm -hmm. And that approach mm -hmm. is something that you can do mm -hmm. with the right kinds of partners and the right, mm -hmm. the, and, and the right kinds of approach to building a true distribution pipeline mm -hmm. and sort of populating it with the right people and the right selling models mm. along the way. Mm, exactly. Mm. You mentioned about right people, right approach, and right market yeah. on yeah. the right time. Yeah. Yes. And by the way, the right investors. Right. Are, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so what are the right investors? So the right investor, well, first and foremost, the right investor has to be on board with the timeline you're going to take to come to market and achieve the objectives that will make that investor happy, mm -hmm. right? Somebody looking for a quick flip of their investment in a year mm -hmm. is probably not someone you want to talk about, no matter how much, <laughs> how much they, they may want in. The other element of that is that wherever you can, you want investors who are going to, who are going to be your, your first introducers into marketplace. Top investors, top tier investors, especially if you're bringing a product that's already got some traction and, and are you know, not looking for zero stage seed capital, but looking for growth capital, mm -hmm. those investors are already going to have a network that, that can help you, mm -hmm. the right ones. Mm -hmm. you know, each investor's network is different, mm -hmm. but the right investors will always bring more than money mm -hmm. and always be proactive in deploying more than money mm -hmm. because for you, it's speed as you know as, as the new company coming to market it's speed access and sort of a, a more a more reliable more likely to succeed approach for them it's de-risking their investment to be able to apply their network mm -hmm. to you yeah. i've made this investment and now i've got you know because i've got three places i can take you to to help streamline your process mm -hmm. of coming of, of bringing the product mm -hmm. into yeah. into the market exactly that's the win the true value is always more than the money. So the last mm -hmm. question, mm -hmm. our, our, our show is called Innovation Dialogue. So what mm -hmm. is innovation by your definition in one sentence mm -hmm. in the cross-border e-commerce field? In the cross-border e-commerce field. So it's almost impossible to answer in one sentence, but I'll try. <laughs> Two sentences, okay. So to me, innovation is, is about identifying a new opportunity and mapping it to a new need and sometimes, this is sort of the, the second part of this, sometimes with a whole new approach to, to actually connecting those two. Because not every innovation is a literal new invention. Sometimes it's a business model innovation. In fact, we have examples, um, you know, one of my favorite examples of a business model innovation is Gillette, the razor company, which for years and years had what they called an innovation group that 
whose idea of innovation was to go from two blades to three, and then three blades to four. And recently, they almost had their lunch eaten by a little company called Dollar Shave Club that did nothing more than innovate the business model of saying, here's the product, it is what it is, but now there's this subscription model. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the dominant player totally missed it mm -hmm. and nearly got their lunch eaten and they finally figured it out and you know, caught up and, and went out and acquired Dollar Shave Club and did that. But the thing is, innovation happens in, in a lot of areas. It's not just about product. It's also about the way you deliver and service and support that product mm -hmm. And nowadays, it's also about how you market it. We have mm -hmm. so many innovations in marketing approaches, and that's going to keep going, mm -hmm. right? It's, you know, social media has made, mm -hmm. has made dramatic changes in how we develop awareness, but it's only just beginning. Mm -hmm. So you really have to look for opportunities to innovate in every area of how a business functions, from mm -hmm. the people to the product to the business strategy, to the market approach, and even to the investment model. Mm, okay, so today we're, we're with Peter Henry, and mm. we talked about how to eat an elephant, launch your product to the United States market. Uh, thank you, Peter. Yep. Thank, thank you. you, Diana.